Welcome back to Web Certain TV. I'm Gemma Houghton. Today I'm joined by Andor Palau, who's the head of SEO at PCase, and we're going to be talking about SEO tools and the benefits of using them. Hi Andor, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. So yeah, SEO tools, there's many of them on the market now. Yeah. A lot of people really get excited about them. What yeah. do you think are the real benefits of using them? I mean, one of the benefits is, of course, um, getting data, you know. Um, if you need to make decisions um, for clients or for yourself, then it's always good if you can base them on, on data. Mm -hmm. and makes it pretty easier in, in discussions as well. You know, if you can show, for example, well, that URL doesn't ring anymore, or at least that section has no traffic since the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually no discussions, right? Yeah. So data or uh, you, if you, that you can show data is, is quite good. Yeah. So another benefit maybe is, of course, um, tools are time saving, you know, we can check a lot, check a lot of things very, very fast. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit of automation. Yeah. So that's quite helpful. And maybe another thing is um, transparency, because um, if you work on the same database um, with your clients, um, it's always helpful because they see the same as you. Yeah. So yeah, it makes it much easier to have yeah. discussions about what's Definitely. happening. And, and yet we mentioned there are you know a lot of different tools out there. Which, what kind of parts of SEO, which elements of the SEO process are they most effective for? Yeah. I mean, we have some of these all-in-one toolboxes, right? Yeah. Like like search metrics mm -hmm. or Zistrix. Um, these tools are pretty helpful because you can analyze, for example, if a domain was hit by, I don't know, an update and so yeah. on. You can do ad hoc analyzers, you can check rankings, mm -hmm. you can check other things. That's quite helpful f um, in that part. Then you have, of course, these databases like link databases, like Majestic, like Ahrefs, you definitely need that if you want to have um, an overview of the whole off-page thing, you know. Yeah. Then maybe there are other meta tools like link research tools where you can combine all these data and so on. That's pretty helpful. And in the end, when you're a bit fancy of, of technical SEO, then you need mm -hmm. something like, like crawling tools or internal yeah. linking tools like, I don't know, search, um, what is it, um, Screaming Frog, Deep Crawl. Yeah. On page, other store, there are a lot of them, and um, we love all of them actually, <laughs> yeah. because it's always good to have, yeah, to look at, at, at from from different sites. So you know, like you say, you just mentioned so many there, and they all have different functions in some ways, or and there's many that do similar things. So when, if you're a business, especially a smaller business, say that can't necessarily hasn't got the resources to have so many tools, mm. how do you, what are the criteria you should think about when deciding which ones might be best mm. fit for you? That's actually a tough question because mm. there's no straight answer. Yeah. Um, I think a small company needs to make sure what they want to know or what they want to analyze. Mm -hmm. If it's just checking rankings for them, then they are fine with a the, with the smaller tool. If they want to do all these, for example, um, competitor analyzers thing, then maybe a, a toolbox is, is good. I mean, there are um, always tools which have different license, which makes it maybe easier for some because you don't need to buy all. Yep. Yeah, you don't need a, a, for example, search metric suite when you're a small company. So there are better solutions maybe, but needs to, well, it should always be or should always fit on what you want to have. And you know, a lot of these tools are of course paid tools. Yeah. Is it? Are there any free tools available other than you know, for example, you know, Google Search Console and the, the basic Google tools? Or do you really, if you want any real data and insight, really need to be using a paid tool? I mean, I think the key factor there is data quality. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you need to make decisions or yeah. recommendations, for example, as a, as a consult, then you should take care of that the data you're using is really really on a high level. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, you can always make wrong decisions with good data, but at least you had good data, you had the possibility to make good decisions, yeah, right? Yeah, you take out one variable. Like exactly. Yeah. So the thing is, of course, um, even if you have the best data, um, you need to, to check them, yeah? Uh, and I wouldn't say that uh, the, the ex most expensive tools are the best ones, but when you think of how many money it costs to to collect the, the data and to store the data. I mean, data storing is, is such a huge thing. Yeah? Google yeah. Is, is, is building an, an, um, a data center in the Netherlands, which costs, I don't know, 700 millions. Yeah. So that is why <laughs> tools need to be paid, actually. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise, yeah. there's no way they could provide that level. Yeah. Absolutely. And you mentioned at the beginning, obviously, one of the benefits is the fact that it tools enable you some automation and remove some of the manual yeah. side of it and some of the more laborious tasks. But what are the risks of 
you know, automating some of the processes and how can you minimize those risks? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe one, one, one pitfall could be that you get some sort of blindness, you know, you're doing the same thing again, 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 and you never question it. Yeah. So that's why we like to, to work with different databases and to use different tools for different tasks sometimes or to switch mm -hmm. actually, um, because otherwise you're maybe just in your funnel you know yeah and just assume that it's yeah working when actually things yeah. might change another thing maybe could be that there are some tools out there which already do some sort of recommendations and i think when it comes to decision making there's always or well, there should always be human um yeah. in you know so don't be a fool with the tool don't let the tool decide what you're doing next i think the the, the for example the in-house seo needs the website or the the, the complex um, the complexity of yeah. a website may be a bit better than, than just a tool. Yeah, so always use the tool to guide, but yeah. make sure that you're using yeah. personal and human judgment to True. make the final decision. Yeah. And then this is probably a very tough question, but which one or two SEO tools could you not <laughs> live without? Which would be the worst ones that you could not have? Oh, cool. Um, good one. Um, <laughs> I think... Hmm. I think I would go with with some technical, mm -hmm. so for example, like 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 Screaming Frog, um, because these tools helps us a lot to to understand the infrastructure of a website and to detect technical things, and, and we can see a lot of things um, which are missing and so on and so on. I mean, the good thing on Screaming Frog is that you are seeing the the URLs running right in front of you. It's like looking the matrix, right? Mm. <laughs> you just need yeah. to know how to to encode. Yeah. And um, this is one tool I definitely would. Uh, go with and then maybe some some linked database like Majestics or so. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for sharing that with us today. It's great to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Thanks.